in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All God's people said. All God's people said. All God's people said. Heavenly Father, what a wonderful thing grace is. I feel like we're just discovering it. I feel like we're just understanding. And please grant everyone the grace to understand. By grace they're saved, by grace they're going to heaven, by grace they're on their journey. And we want, oh, if we understand grace, that is an outrageous teaching that the Holy Spirit is alive in them. So if you can grasp grace, you can only grasp this by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please, Father God, be so generous that people can understand and take in by a grace we are saved. Mother Mary, Queen of the Angels and the Saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, all God's people said. Yeah. Right now, I want you to go to Romans 6. I, I will be giving you other Bible verses, but primarily I'm going to stick here tonight. I want to share with you the background of this is how you get to grace. Amen? Because when you read Romans, the book of Romans is the, the book in the Bible to understand more than any other book, your salvation. Jesus is the savior. Romans is the explanation. God wants to turn you into a, from a beggar to a prince. God wants to turn you from a beggar to a princess. We all started out th with these three points. Number one, I can do nothing. Number two, God doesn't require anything. Number three, Jesus has done it all. Can someone say amen? I can do nothing. God doesn't require me to earn my way. And guess what? Jesus has done it all. When you are not sinning, you recognize grace. When you don't sin, you recognize your grace awakening. Do I hear amen? Verse 1, we kind of read this yesterday. What then shall we say? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. Can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us have been baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Now, I, I like to tell people a million times, when Jesus died, it was my death. When Jesus was buried, it was my burial. When Jesus rose from the dead, it was my resurrection. Can anybody grasp that yet? No. I want you, starting right now, to plan to receive grace for all time. This is going to take you into eternity. I want to give you three C's of your grace. The first word when you have grace, it's Continual. Do you see that right there? Verse one. Are we continue in grace? Grace has got to be continual. Number two. When you have grace, it's contagious. Number three. 
Number three, when you have grace, it's conspicuous. When you do this, you will have nothing but victory in your life. Number one, it's what? Continual, verse one. Number two, it's contagious. Number three, it's conspicuous. Summary statement, it is your victory. I'm going to give you an outline. I'm going to show you where it is. And we're going to cover this outline on how you get grace. Now, of course, sacramentally, we can say through the sacraments. Correct. When you were baptized, you got grace called sanctifying grace. When you live your vocation, you call it actual grace. I want to give you three call words on how we receive grace. Here are the three words. I'll tell you where they are. And so these are going to be the three points we're going to cover tonight. The first word is you got to know this. Write the word no, K-N-O-W. When you know something, it's called a fact. I'm just giving you the outline. We'll, we'll, we'll repeat this, okay? That's in Romans 6, 6. We know that our former man was crucified with him so that the sinful body might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. All right, so that's number one. Uh, it's just I'm giving you an outline, and we're going to tell you, and I'm going to pray over you for a mighty outpouring of grace. Number two, you got to reckon. Reckon. That's in six eleven, Romans six eleven. Everybody, write down the word reckon, and that means you're going to have faith. Now I'm going to walk you through this. So you get a grace awakening. 6.11, you got to reckon. That's called faith. The third thing is yield. And that is in, that is in 6.13. That's called function. There's your outline. What are the three words? Knowing, reckon, and yield. What does it mean to know? Fact. What does it mean to reckon? Faith. What does it mean to yield? Function. Okay. So we're going to be traveling from chapter 6-6. Six, six. And we're going to be traveling all the way down to, uh, what, 15 or so. If you follow carefully with me, you will have a grace awakening tonight. How many say amen? The first thing I, I wanted to share with you, and I want to use in the middle of this, somebody very important that we all know. His name is St. Augustine. I want to tell you a little story about St. Augustine, how he had a grace awakening. How many know the church always taught this, but how many know it didn't get down to you? Go with me to verse 6. Romans 6, 6. All right, now this is, turn the person next to you. The first thing is to know. Let's look at verse six. We know that our old self 
when we say old self, that was our lives of sin. We were crucified with him so that the sinful body might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. Is there everyone here that can give your own testimony to each other now and say, I used to do certain sins. I don't do them anymore. Can everybody say yes to your life? I used to do these things. I don't do them anymore. I, I think we can all say that. When I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, June 24th, 1970, the first thing that happened to me is I never cursed again. I believe it's safe to say, Holy Spirit, help me. I can't curse. I can't curse. It can't come out of me because I'm not a slave to cursing. Even though I think certain things of certain people at times. Somebody saying, hmm, but I can't curse. I don't want to curse. Now, here's what you must know. You must know this. I can only identify with Christ. You must have total ID with Christ. He became one with us. It sounds like marriage. You became one with Christ. Can everybody, does everybody know that? Know it. I mean, beyond a shadow of a doubt, do you know that? Here's what happened. He became one with us so that we can take on his deity. When you have grace, when you have grace, you have his nature. When you have grace, you have his nature. There's an unbelievable thing that happens when you have God's nature in you. Two incredible things happen when you receive an ID with Christ. Two things disappear in your life immediately when you have grace. When you have grace, you, the penalty of all your sins is gone. When you have grace, all the penalty of your sins is gone. When you have grace, all the power of your sin is gone. As soon as grace comes upon you and you ID with Jesus, I have no more penalties. In our day and age, we have what is called the divine mercy. When we go to confession, what are you told? You don't go to purgatory. What happened? Your penalty is gone and the power of sin is gone. When Jesus dies on the cross, he deals with sin's power. Look at verse 7 of chapter 6. He says to us, Paul does, For he who has died is freed from sin. You're free. One thing every one of us wants to say, I'm free. Now, everyone get up and do three cartwheels right now. Even if you have to break your chair again, sir. Everybody say, I am free. 
Verse 7, for he who has died is freed from sin. How many think that's good news? Death's penalty of sin has no more power over me. What is the power of sin? The power of sin is Satan has been my slave master. And he's not going to do it to me anymore. Jesus on the cross deals with me. And Jesus on the cross took me on. So the old man, the way I used to be, has been literally. Are you hearing me? Literally. Are you hearing me? Crucified. When you look at your crucifix tonight, of course, see Jesus. But also see the old self dead. Do I hear amen? Mm -hmm. All of us here wanted to start all new and brand new. You got it right now. Do I hear amen? Now in verses three and four, here's something that's not emphasized. Do you not know that all of us have been baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? Baptized means immersed. We were buried. Now, this is going to shock you, literally, because Jesus took all of you on because you identified with him. He took your place totally, 100%, and was literally buried all the way. Jesus took all of me on because of grace. I didn't experience it, but he did. Grace means everything I deserved, somebody took it on before me. It means this. What does it mean that Jesus was died and was buried? How many know burial is part of the gospel? How many times do you hear that? You don't. It's mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15. I want you to do something and say, I was buried. When the Jews buried somebody, they would do this. You had to be totally put out of sight as soon as possible. Jewish people do what? Bury the person what? Right away. Did that happen to Jesus? Yes. They wanted to bury him right away and get him out of sight. Now, what do Catholics do? We look at dead bodies with new ties on and dresses. And we look at the dead body and say, you know, Phil never wore that tie in his life. Why did Kathy buy such a tie? That is the ugliest looking tie I've ever seen on a dead person in my life. When you're dead, the Jewish understanding of the Bible is get rid of them. When you're buried, do not touch them. Now, when you are dead, you have no bones of your old life left. 
What does Ezekiel say, sister? Your favorite chapter. Dead bones gonna rise again. Ezekiel 37. Dead bones gonna rise again. Now, in verses 4 and 5 of Romans, we were raised with him. We were absolutely, positively raised with him. When you're raised with Jesus, grace makes you brand new. Now, I want everybody to say this with me. I am brand new. I am totally brand new. How many think you could deal with that for the rest of your life? I am totally brand new. That's why if someone picks on you and dare calls you a name, you look at them and say this, my father is not going to like this at all. I am brand new. St. Augustine, as you probably all know, is probably the third greatest mind in human history. The first was Jesus. The second is St. Paul. The third, fourth is St. Thomas Aquinas. And then comes St. Augustine or Augustine. Some say tomato and some say tomato. Some say potato and some say potato. Now, watch this. This is a great little story. It's little, but powerful. He was a playboy. He made this song up. I'm a girl watcher. I'm a girl watcher. I just watch the girls go by. I'm a girl watcher. Mm -hmm -hmm. There comes another one. I'm a girl watcher. And all of a sudden, he got graced converted. When he got graced converted, one day he was walking on the streets and he saw one of his old flames. And the woman said, Augustine, it is I. He kept walking with his head covered. Augustine, it is I. He turned the corner. She kept following. Augustine, it is I. Finally, she came all the way up to him. Augustine, it is I. And as he put his head down, he said, but. It is not I. When you have grace, you could declare to all your old flames, it is not I. How many like that little story? Isn't that good? It is not I. Now, we have here Verses 3 and 4, St. Paul mentioning baptism. We're baptized because it shows the awesome death and resurrection of Jesus. Awesome. This is called, ready for this? Let me give you a new, ex, ex, new teaching for baptism. Baptism is called the liquid tomb. Baptism is called your liquid tomb. We are raised, verse 5, two, four, 3, 4, 5, we are raised to walk in the newness of Christ. When we celebrate the Eucharist, when we celebrate baptism as Catholics, baptism means this, I will always identify with Jesus 
Christ. So baptism means your identification with Christ. When you come to the table of the Lord, you have the Eucharist. Do you know what the Eucharist means? The death of Christ on Calvary for every believer. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. So Paul keeps mentioning baptism, and that's my identity with Jesus. And later on, we're nurtured by the Eucharist, and that means I celebrate his death and resurrection because I am a believer. Now, what is the first title? One of the first titles in the Bible for you. I'm a believer. Sadly, the other day in Africa, the Muslims came into a town and captured Christians and basically said, give up, deny Jesus. Now, I prophesied to you that's going to come to your front doors. What did they do to that man? They chopped off his right hand. He would not deny Jesus. Today we celebrate St. Dominic. And St. Dominic longed to be scourged for the Lord Jesus Christ. So now, number one is I've got to know and identify. So let's let's look at this. How many can say to me right now, if you want to receive the grace awakening, I identify with Jesus Christ. If you can say amen. I identify with Jesus. And you're not taking him away from me. Jesus is my all and my all. So what do we know? We know that the former man was crucified. Bill died. Bill's gone. Don't you see this handsome Christian in front of you? It's not Bill, baby. It's the glory of the grace of God. We know that with him, so that the sinful body might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved i don't want to be enslaved to anyone or anything for he who has done what he has died with christ we believe we shall live with him verse nine for we know see the other no 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 what's the second there that's the second no we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. How many times do we die? By the way, hold your heart on this one. Are you ready? You already died. If you have grace in you, you already died. And so what, what does grace do? It makes you live. You're already dead. Ding dong, the witch is dead. We're dead. I'm alive. Death no longer has dominion over him. Now, look at verse number 10 and verse number 9. Remember we said in the beginning, Adam and Eve. By the way, I, I've been doing some little more study. In the church's teaching, the Catholic Church teaches that we came from one set of parents. And guess what just happened? Scientists have said the same thing. We've all come from one set of parents. It's called humanis generis. 
So we didn't come from monkeys. We came from one set of parents. So you precious people are my brothers and my sisters. Now, what happens here is when I have grace, dominion doesn't have any more power over me. It's be, I'm being restored. The death he died to sin once for all, but he lives, he lives in life for God, verse 10. Now let's look at number two. All right, so what do I got to do to get grace? I identify with Jesus. How many can say amen? amen. Now you ready for number two? And then I'm going to pray over you. Amen. Number two. How many know you're getting good stuff? Number two. I reckon. Now let's look at verse 11. You must also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. So how many here can say, I will appropriate my faith now. What you need to do to receive grace is a faith explosion in your life. You need to say, I can't say this for you. I believe. So you must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ. Let not sin reign in your mortal bodies, verse 12, to make, you in, to make you obey their passions. As soon as you can say the words from the depth of your heart, I believe you are reckoned to God. That means this. It's a banking term where your faith will go into the knowledge of what God has done by giving you grace. Now, what have I reckoned? Here's what I reckoned. I reckon that I have been crucified with Christ. If you believe that, say, I believe. If you can honestly say, I believe, grace will start to pour through your soul right now. I believe I've been crucified with Christ. Now watch this. This is so good. Everybody write down the, the expression. I've been crucified with Christ. Underline the word crucified. And under the word crucified, write down there, took place once and for all. took place once and for all. Everybody write the word reckon down. Reckon means added to your account in heaven. What is grace? It's your account in glory filling up. Underneath wreck and write, this is day after day after day after day after day after day after day. It's time for us to fill up on grace. When you put reckon together with crucified, it means I believe 
and I will come to ultimate total victory in my life. Reckon means translating things from your head to your heart. When you have grace, it goes to your heart. This is the head to the heart. To reckon was a bookkeeping term, and it was faith acting in knowing a fact. So now, you can see the beauty of amazing grace. In Colossians 3, 3, Paul says to us, you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Now listen to me, saints. You're all still good looking people. But when I look at you, if you tell me you're grace filled, I am looking at Jesus. How many believe with me? Jesus looks good. How many agree with me? Jesus is beautiful. You know, when I see him a lot in my little boppers, I have four little boppers. My nephew, 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 and my niece, I see them, I say, how beautiful he is. So now, step number one, to receive grace. What I got to do, I got to know to identify with Jesus crucified. Number two, I got to reckon. I got to appropriate with my faith this truth. I say, yes. Yes, yes. I've been crucified. It took place once and for all. My reckoning goes on day after day as the account of grace accumulates, accumulates, and accumulates. Number three, yield. Let's see, that's in verse 13. Yield. When we go into a yielding, we all know yield the right of way, like, well, the cars are streaming down. Here's what he says for yield, verse number uh, 13. Romans 6, 13. Romans 6, 13. Do not yield your members. Everybody know what your members are? Your hands, your eyes, your ears, your feet. Do not yield your members as instruments of wickedness, but yield yourselves to God as men who have been brought from death to life. I told you many times, God never wanted you to choose between right and wrong. Why? Because all of us now and then would choose wrong. So don't yield your members to wickedness. Here is called function. If you're going to receive grace, it's got to be functional. When you have function, it means you will start to abound in victory. That means you're going to have a great rest of your life. 
How many need a great rest of your life right about now? In verse 12 of Romans 6, I told you before, listen to me very carefully. We're going to go through this carefully. When you yield to God, which means, very, let's break it down even more. What does that mean? Help. Do it. Save me. I can't do it. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord, take away, I, I can't see. Help my unbelief. So how many now know how to yield? Now, when I do that, verse 12, as soon as I receive grace, an unbelievable thing happens. Every power of sin is broken in me immediately. Here's the key to everything I said. I hope you know. Do you know the key? I hope you know. Here's the key. The key is this. Sin will never again have dominion over me. You're not going to see me. Remember St. Augustine? It is not I. I love that little story. Mm -hmm. And then the glorious truth will come and set me free. This is what he says in verse 14. Sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law, but under grace. See verse 14? Mm -hmm. I am under grace. Now, let's go into the practicum of yielding, yielding, yielding. I'm going to give you a negative and a positive to yielding to grace. When we have grace, I can turn to the evil one and say, number one, I do not have to obey you, evil one. Number two, I will never say the things I said in my past life. I will never go back to repeating what I said in my past life. Number three, I will choose against myself. And I will not do what God doesn't command me to do. Number four, I will not yield my members to sin. Everybody got all four? That's the negative. Here's the positive side of yielding. The positive side is, Jesus, I enthrone you. It's called your personal enthronement of the Savior. Now watch this. This is a game changer statement. I will never, never, never use my ability anymore. My response will only be his ability. How many like that about grace? I will never, 
use my ability anymore. But my response will only be, I will respond to your ability only. Grace, grace, grace. I, because of what, how God made me, I can do it without him many times, but he will never do it without me. That's grace. When temptation comes our way, yield to his way. The question is, to whom will you yield? Grace points me in his direction. Listen, saints, you've got to enjoy the vision and the victory that's already yours. Here's what you say. The old me is dead. Incredible power will come, I promise you. I promise you. Incredible power will come into your life. I promise you. You will begin to know victory after victory after victory. How many need that? Victory? After victory, after victory. How many want that? How many want to see the power of the Almighty truly taking over your heart, your life? Victory, after victory, after victory. You, verse 14 says, shall not ever again have dominion over you. Yield with me tonight. You will be free. It's the matter of your will. Submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the function for us to obey. And then we will be free and free indeed. Now, I want to pray with you to go through these three things. Amen? I want you to have tonight a grace awakening. What do you got to do? No. Reckon. Yield. Everybody say that with me. No. Reckon and yield. Now, I want to pray with you for this grace awakening. Can you imagine on the second half of our lives, we discovered this. Heavenly Father, I just pray right now for grace awakening. I pray there's an abundance of grace coming upon each person. I pray that we will be men and women who will be grace-filled. I pray we will be men and women who live in faith. I pray that never again may a mortal soul never touch our, our, our souls. I even pray that venial sins be destroyed too. I want a grace awakening. I want the life of Jesus to so take me over. Help me to know who you are. 
Help me to know and identify with Christ crucified. That you took my place. You took my all in all. You came upon me. You lived for me. You died for me. And now I can live in your grace. Release me now from the power of sin and the penalty of sin. Place it at the feet of Jesus right now. Bury me, but raise me up. Let me enjoy right now new life in your Holy Spirit. Let me say with St. Augustine, it is not I. It is Christ. Give me the gift of my baptism. And tomorrow, or to, if I receive Jesus in the Eucharist, let it be the best Eucharist of my life. I reckon to you. I reckon to you by my faith. I believe you've done all of this. I believe you died. I believe you rose. I believe you're coming again. I believe and I reckon that my faith will have an explosion in it. I believe that I'm to march from victory to more victory, from strength to strength, as the psalmist said, as Paul says in the book of Corinthians, from glory to glory. I reckon with you. And also, dear Heavenly Father, grace fill me that no more power of sin will ever dominate my life again. I mean, the smallest venial sins to, God forbid, another mortal sin. I yield to you. I ask you to baptize the members of my body, my hands, my feet, my mouth, my ears, my legs, my, my teeth, my mouth, my nose, my eyes, my feet, my toes. All my members go to you. And with these members, I'll be brought into the glorious truth of who you are. I will, I will say to the evil one, I will never obey you again. I will stand before you and I will not yield to the evil one. I will choose against self and I will not do what self demands. I will yield my members to God's plan. I will enthrone Jesus Christ as my Lord, my God, my Savior, and my all. I will never again choose my ability, but I will respond to the ability that God gives. When I am tempted, I'll say, he alone is strong. He will give me strength and mercy. Tonight and always, I submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I will obey and I will march from this night forward, from victory to victory to victory. I plan, with God's grace, to abound in grace, awakening now and always. Amen.